The song on the Oatly milk carton is hot garbage and I'm gonna fix it. I don't normally buy oat milk, but I was at the grocery store the other day and picked up a carton of Oatly milk and noticed on the side of the carton, there is a piece of music that was written. And so like, I quickly snapped a picture of it because I was really curious as to how it would sound. And of course, I didn't have a piano on my way home, but I used all of my oral skills and my choir skills to be able to kind of use my relative pitch to start to figure it out in my head before I actually got to something more concrete. And even while I was singing it in my head, I had a hard time finding like the center of tonality and getting it all to sound right. And something just sounded really weird with it. So of course I come home and I play the music off of the picture that I had taken. And it sounds like this. Yeah. I don't know who was responsible for writing this little anthem here, but I decided I needed to fix it. So first I'm going to go through and actually like analyze the music theory of this piece, just writing out like what chords each of these notes are supposed to be creating. So we can kind of know where this piece is starting from. So we've got the first three lead in notes by the bass part, which are F, G and A. So keep in mind, we're in the key of F major for this song. So any, F chords are going to be our tonic chords, which means that the very last chord at the end, which is F, C, F, and A is obviously going to be our one chord. Write that below and that above. So like that, see? But now I gotta do the rest of the piece. So let's go to that first chord, which is, what, what is this? What is this? Like seriously, it's B flat, C, D, and F? What is that supposed to be? It's like B flat major with a added second. It's a B2 chord, I think technically. I forgot how to write that in Roman numerals, but it's a four chord. I'm just gonna write it like that at the bottom. That's probably not the technically correct way to write it because it's been a little bit too long since I've done uh, full on theory analysis. I'm also not gonna care too strongly about inversions on this. I just wanna get the basic point across to, for my own sanity. So next up we have B flat, F, B flat, D. That's our basic uh, four chord again. Oh shoot, uh, B flat. I forgot to write that in for the last one too. Like that. Wow. So that repeats for two more notes and then it moves on. Did we really just do like parallel fifths here? I know no parallel fifths is a little bit more of an archaic voice part writing rule uh, that's more from around like the Baroque slash classical period, but it is still a good idea to try to avoid it, particularly when you moved all of the notes in parallel motion. You can't have something move in the opposite direction. Like nothing there. <sighs> so now we're on C, which means this is a five chord. So it looks like that. Th this, whoever wrote this must have been a fan of all the notes just moving in the same direction, which even if it's not completely one-to-one -one parallel, like the last movement was, it it's nice to have some kind of crossways motion. It sounds good to your ears. And just, and what, and what is this chord? It sounds nasty. So we have D, C, D, and G. So there's another like suspended note in there. What is that? Is it C2? It could be like a C2, but the D is on the bottom. And that's a really weird choice. We're sort of missing one note to fully figure out exactly what it is, but my best guess is it's a C2 chord because we're in the key of F and C is on the five. So like that would be a C2 chord. 
which that's a better voicing than whatever they wrote. So I'm gonna label it as a C2. It should be a five with the added second. And then it goes back to the same chord as before, so we're back to the five. So it looks something like that for a rough analysis of this. Which is why it makes no sense. Because we have that first lead in and our first chord is a four chord with an added second. So it's already an unusual chord to start on. And it doesn't make sense because your ear kind of wants to hear that one chord first based on the lead in that the bass gives. But it's not the one chord, it's the four chord. So it just, it sounds so off. Let's rewrite this. <gasps> Do I still have my staff paper? Okay, hold on. I'm gonna be right back. I gotta see if I still have my staff paper. Okay, so I did not have a blank staff, but I did just end up printing off my own. Oh, stop. No, not the fresh. Do you ever hate getting music fresh off the printer and it's still got that printer curl to it? I just, I hate dealing with that. Uh, but I got a blank staff. Uh, I just kind of printed it off real quick. Um, so we're gonna write a new anthem for Oatly because their uh, harmonization and voice part leading needs some work. I don't wanna edit it too heavily. I don't wanna go all crazy on it. So we're gonna keep most of it relatively simple, but the voice part leading especially really needs some work. First up, the first thing I really wanna fix is that bass lead in. We have it on F, G, A going up to B flat. Here's my problem with this. That's a fine lead in. It, lots of songs do that. The difference is we're in the key of F major and it has a lead in as if it's in the key of B flat major. So what do I mean by this? Think of a lot of songs that have that kind of lead in. The da 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 da, I gotta start on a different note. Da 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 da. To put it in solfege terms, it's typically so la ti do, where we're leading up to do. But in this particular case, we have it do, re, mi, fa. And scale wise, those two lead ups sound exactly the same, but one is leading up to a completely different chord, whereas the other one is kind of setting up the tonal center for the rest of the song going forward. And for a choir to get the rest of their starting pitch, it's really important for them to know what their tonal center is. So while you technically can write it as do, re, mi, fa, people have it so ingrained in their ear as so, la, ti, do, that you're gonna have a much bigger success of the choir getting their correct starting pitch if you write it as so, la, ti, do, rather than do, re, mi, fa. And also, as a general side note, that low F is a little bit low for a lot of basses to be starting at. Some basses can hit that perfectly fine, no problem, whereas others might find that's a little bit too low on the range. So we're just gonna shift it up to so, la, ti, do and start on that C instead. So there's my, there's my first few notes there, so you can, so you can see it. It's, Hopefully the pencil doesn't reflect too hard. So we have those first three lead in notes and then we're gonna lead up to the tonic do right there, which is F in this key. So now instead of having a B flat with an added second chord, we're starting on the actual tonic, which is F major. Oh, that's nice. I like that. I like that voicing a lot. Okay, so that means basses are gonna be on F, tenors are gonna be on C, altos are gonna be on A, and sopranos are gonna be on F up high. Yeah, Soprano's gonna deal with that. So it's gonna look like that. I'm gonna write the stems in later once I, uh, that's gonna be more polishing kind of stuff. Just write the note heads in there first so I know where I'm going. I didn't mind that like repetitive chord that they have right there. So if I move from the chord that I made to what they wrote next, that doesn't sound bad. The basses would have to go from to it's, it's okay, and tenors would have to go from to, it's a fifth jump. The altos and sopranos on the other hand, I like that movement, I think that sounds pretty okay. So I think keeping that chord the same, but maybe just fixing what the tenors and basses have. I do like how that sounds though. You know what, I'm changing my mind a little bit. This is why we write in pencil. I'm gonna keep that same chord and then we're gonna see, if we're gonna go back 
and see if we need to do any edits on it. So I'm gonna try keeping those three, let me, let me there, oh, there, there, now we can see it better. Okay, I'm gonna try keeping those same three notes. That's exactly how the first one was written there too, just as like a side-by-side -side comparison. See, those are like the same notes there at the same point of the measure. So I'll keep that there for now. I'll see how it goes going forward. So we go from the one chord, which is F major, to the four chord, which is B flat major. So then we wanna move to, so that's what it was originally written. I think that C chord is okay. This is a simple anthem, so you don't, we're not gonna have like a lot of complex harmonies here, but that's all a parallel movement. And I really wanna avoid that. So let's voice that differently. nice. I like that for the altos and sopranos. That's G and E. So those two move in opposite directions, which gives it a little bit more color. How much space do I have left? Oh gosh, I gotta squish this down. Nothing's playing the C. I need something to play the C. I'm having issues with my bass and tenor writing right now. That is not what I want to do. I don't want to have parallel fists the entire time of my bass and tenor parts. That, that sounds nice. Okay, hold on. That's pretty good. Let's start there. Uh, that moves the tenor down to E and then the bass up to C. Okay, so that's what it's kind of looking like right now. Um, and then the next, the second to second to last chord is what I have next. Um, I definitely want to keep that 5-1 movement. Uh, it's pretty standard for most kind of ending cadence chord progressions. But that second to last chord, so they have a C2, which is... It, I mean, sure, if you wanna... It sounds really cool, but like, it doesn't really fit in the overall scheme of things. So I have F, B flat, C. What if we do a... Uh, five, seven, back to five. I like that, let's try that. So we are currently on a C chord, so we just need to find a way to add in the seventh. I like that. So let's write that in for soprano and alto. And then what did I do for the bass? So here's the first option. Here's the second option. I kind of like the second option a little bit better, but it's hypocritical because I completely got rid of the bass note of that chord. The way that's voiced, there's no C in that chord at all whatsoever, but it sounds more interesting to me. I think I'm gonna go with that. Ah. Okay, so something like, I don't know, is my handwriting too messy that you can't see what notes are it? So something like, Sounds so much better. So let me clean this up real quick. Uh, put some actual uh, stems and stuff on it and rhythmic notations. Um, and then we'll see how, we'll, we'll put the finishing touches on everything here. Okay. So that's what I have for this right here. My rearrangement of this garbage piece of music. Maybe I shouldn't be so mean to this poor composer. I don't know who wrote this and how much experience they have in part writing. So that's them side by side, kind of the original version up here, obviously, and then my version down here. And then real quick, let's analyze my version. So I had that lead in. And we actually start on the one chord rather than the four chord. It's not even the five chord, it's the four chord. That's a, such an odd, Choice. We start on the one chord, which is F major in this case. Then we move to, that's the four chord, which in this key signature is B flat major. Then we move on to the five chord, which is C, and then briefly move to the five seven, which is C seven, and then back to the five chord, so back to C before finishing on 
the one chord. So we don't have all these like added suspended notes like the original has, but the voicing of it sounds so much better. It's not jumpy, your ear can hear a bit better. And even though mine is technically more simplistic, sometimes simplicity is key, particularly when you're dealing with voices. Singers need to be able to hear the next note in their head a lot more than instrumentalists do. Singers can go in between pitches, so they really have to be accurate on their pitches. And so the more they can predict their next note, the more likely they are to be able to better sing the song. So for comparison, um, I will attempt to play the original. It, they have a couple ninths that I might have to roll, so I'm not gonna be able to play it great. So here's the original. Versus, here is mine. So tell me in the comments below, which one of those you liked better? Did you like the original one with all the fancy added notes? Or did you like the correct answer, which is mine, right? You liked mine better, right? But that's all I had for this week's video. So of course, if you like this video, you'd like to see more of it, feel free to subscribe to the channel. And yeah, otherwise I will see you next time. Goodbye.